What's up, everybody? This is Infamous. I'm going to take you through some 704D lessons. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go over requirements um, for your systems and whatnot. First thing is if you have Windows Vista, you cannot do any um, programming uh, for the 3D modelers. ZBrush will not work, um, Maya will not work, 3D Max will not work, and so on. Uh, the main problem is is because of DirectX 10 and they went proprietary and it caused all types of problems. I'm running Windows 7 right now and they brought back they brought back DirectX 9. So that's why I'm able to um, run this in Windows 7. I, I would not recommend this in Windows Vista. Use XP or use uh, Windows 7. I'm running Windows 7 64 bit. Uh, I, as you can see, I got the Core i7. Uh, at 3 gigahertz um, and I got 12 gigs of RAM and I have a tablet uh, it is I do have a tablet I have a Wacom tablet uh, and that's pretty much it and as far as um, my other devices here they are so you can see them uh, I have an NVIDIA Force uh, 9800 GTX Plus um, this is what's called a dual core video card it actually has two GPU use on it and uh process is very fast. Um I also have another system with an SLI setup. But uh I do like the GTX plus because of the multi GPU. It can actually run SLI on one card uh by itself because of the multi GPU feature. Okay, first thing we need to do is um you guys need to set your cache levels. Um you know, just because Windows 7 came out of the package doesn't mean that Dell or HP or anybody installed it correctly. In fact, half the time they install it wrong. So first thing we need to do is tweak your settings so you can get the most processing out of everything. Um, I can tell you right now that Windows XP is built on the Pentium 3 architecture, which has a 256 kilobyte cache. That means that Windows XP uh, runs a 256 cache. Uh, as default, this obviously is wrong. Um, my chip is an 8 megabyte cache. Um, I'll show you real quick. Um, this is how you check. I run a program called CPU ID. Um, you know, it's widely used. A lot of people know about it. Just wait a second while it boots up. Okay. If you come here, uh, let me find my cache here. Let me look for it. Caches. Okay. Um, you see right there the level 3 cache is an 8 megabyte. I know for a fact that Windows 7 and Windows uh, Vista are only set up for a 1 megabyte cache. As you can see, I have an 8 megabyte cache. So you need to run this program called WinXP Smoker. Now, WinXP Smoker does, or Windows 7 Smoker, or Windows Vista Smoker, you get a 30 day free trial and it writes registry keys. I, I could go into my registry and do this manually and set this cache thing because there's a bunch of guides on the net you can look up. But I just use this because it's easier. And don't worry about the 30 days. Uh, once it changes your registry key value, it's permanent. So you can just delete the program right after. Um, you just run through the, um, there's an auto tuner and it'll automatically detect your uh, chip and cache and uh, adjust it correctly. So um, as soon as you run this program, um, the way you can check it is uh, by doing this. If you if you go to Start Task Manager um, and you go to here, you go to Performance. Um, this is Windows 7, so it doesn't have it. There's actually one here, and um, actually told you your total avail available, and it'll give you a bunch of numbers. If you look before and after, you'll see uh, it'll change by 60% increase in speed. Um, you can check the numbers a little box here. Uh, it's on XP. It's not on Vista or uh, 7. So sorry guys. So if you have uh, XP, you just take a screenshot uh, before you install the program so you can see the difference uh, if you want to check that. So anyways, um, so you run Win, Win XP Smoker, Win Vista, whatever your operating system. Let it uh, detect your cache. Go ahead and do the internet tuning and all that stuff, but I'm not worried about that. We're not here for that. We're here to change this cache level. Because um, Windows XP is built on the 256 kilobyte cache, and Vista and 7 are built on the 1 megabit cache. And uh, like I said, as you see, let me, I think I closed that down, should enough. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have an 8 megabyte cache. So um, it obviously needs to be changed, and I did change it. Um, okay, guys. Um, so we're on to the next part. So the next thing you do is go to my computer. You go to properties, uh, pull up your properties, and I believe it's device manager. Um, no, 
I'm um, sorry, Windows 7 is a little weird to me. Uh, here it is. Um, first thing you do is uh, check your performance. And you need to change this. Um, if you have low memory over 2 gigs, um, north, anything under 2 gigs, I would um, uncheck this. Especially meaning if you have multiple hard drives, um, what I would do is I do custom size, and you know give yourself you know a good 4096. So you'd set this 1024, and then you set this 4096, and um, try to set it on a SATA drive, not an IDE, because that'll obviously be slower. And um, you know you can just set it to your uh, C drive, and then you hit set. Um, and what that means is anything over a meg to four megs, it's going to send it into a um, what's called soft RAM, which just basically it's just RAM on a hard drive. Um, so the faster the hard drive, the better the um, processing. Uh, this will help your Windows and your processing, uh, and that's the third trick. So I'm going to cancel this because I got 20 gigs, uh, 12 gigs of RAM, um, and a couple gigs on my um, video card. It does add to it, so that's basically it. All right, before you get started, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, you want to go to 3dguru.com. ATI and NVIDIA um, get their drivers from a company called 3D Guru. Um, they basically write drivers for all, uh, all AD, um, ATIs and whatever. Um, motherboard drivers, everything. Um, all these companies use them. They're actually the ones who provide the companies with their series of drivers. If you actually look, um, and you look at the, these numbers, look up 1907. Right there, 19.107, here's all the series releases. So we either can go to ATI or NVIDIA.com. Uh, drivers, download. Official drivers, yeah, uh, that's good. Um, you'll see right here, 195.162. Um, as you can see, um, you can see that it's the same exact series in the WHQL. This WHQL um, actually comes from um, 3D Guru, and you're better off releasing for these. Um, these guys update maybe once a month. Uh, these guys update once a week, and these guys buy their drivers from these guys. So uh, now you know behind the scenes for drivers, whether you have ATI, uh, make sure all your North Bridges is updated and everything else, and um, there you go. Okay. Um, after you set all that stuff, um, next thing you want to do is um, you want to start adjusting your preferences. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to set the trivia management um, to 2048. Uh, that's what I give mine. Um, I actually give a lot more, but that's fine. Um, this will actually be 2.2. 2. Yeah, shut up. 2.2 uh, 2 when you start it. Make sure you change this to 2 because that's actually a value for lighting. And uh, a bunch of other stuff in the gamma uh, when you create lights. So make sure that's two because that's important. Um, next thing you want to do is renderer. Um, if you have four, a quad core, you do two. I mean, if you have a quad core, you have four. Uh, eight core, you have um, eight. If you have a dual core, you do two. Um, sub gully, that should that's actually wrong. That should be two or four eight. You don't want to end it on two thousand. Um, and that's about it. Oh, it's making me do two thousand. Um, so. Um, that's about all you want to set on here. Uh, to make the settings go, you got to reboot it. So just X out and restart it. Um, so when you come back in, uh, we'll get started and we're going to go through the interface of Cinema 4D. Uh, 